How much interest, Withrow, do you have in the NHL playoffs and the NBA playoffs since they are either underway in the NHL or about to begin, I guess, tomorrow night, I think. Make sure on that dub. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, the NBA playoffs, these play-in scenario games are going on. Do you find yourself having very much interest in either of these leagues? You know, I watched uh, quite a bit of the Islanders Penguins uh, yesterday um, on NBC, and and was into that overtime game, and, and that that felt like a normal uh, you know NHL playoff game. So I guess whatever level of interest I have in the NHL playoffs every year, I have about the same about this year. The NBA playoffs, the 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 seven versus eight, nine versus ten play in. I like the concept of bringing March Madness to the NBA tournament. Yeah. Right? That you have uh, the. I, I, baseball is different because it's a 162 game season, so it made it a little bit uh, stranger. But I did like the, the one game play in in baseball also for that reason, because you kind of throw everything out there. But then you see that, you know, there's ways that you can lose, and then you go to another game, and then you can win that one yeah. and get into the big tournament. Uh, that's a little funky. I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to watch it. I watched a lot yesterday of uh, the Grizzlies and Warriors playing for the eight or nine seed in that game, which that worked out well for the NBA where it came down to the last game of the regular season. And it was just a, a win and one team was eight and then the loss and one team was the nine seed. I'm going to watch the play in games, but it's really matchup dependent at this point. Right. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know that I care enough about the Utah jazz as a one or a two seed or the Phoenix suns, a one or a two seed, depending on who they're playing. If it's the right matchup, then I think I'll pay more attention. I want to see how the Knicks perform in the playoffs because it's been so long since they've been relevant. Yeah, But, you know, outside of those types of teams, I, I don't know that I've got a ton of interest in the NBA this year. Uh, Dub, correct me if I'm right about this. I think the way it's set up for this play-in scenario is, and you may know also with Roe, we talked about this in the first hour, but it's a little bit challenging for a lot of people, so I'm trying to kind of set the table. Seven and eight play against each other. Nine and ten play against each other. Whoever loses the nine ten game is eliminated. Right? They're yeah. out. Yeah. Whoever wins the seven eight game is the seven seed. And then whoever loses that seven eight game plays the winner of the nine ten game. And whoever wins that game is uh, the eight seed. So if you are, for instance, the Lakers they would have to lose to the Golden State Warriors, and then they would have to lose to whoever wins the 9-10 in order for their season to be out. Basically, you have to lose two straight games, and if you're the 9-10 game, you have to win two straight to make it, right? Am I, am I summarizing that correctly uh, for everybody out there? You, you nailed it. That's, that's exactly how it works. And I think that's going to be confusing to a lot of people because we just haven't seen it before. And to your point... It's not quite March Madness style. I guess it is for the 9-10 uh, because whoever loses that game is done. And obviously, if you're in the 9-10 game, you have to win two in a row in order to advance to a seven-game series. And I will just tell you this right now. Uh, Adam Silver is not allowing the, the Lakers to lose. I mean, the, I would bet ev- almost every spare dollar I have that the Lakers are not going to lose two games and suddenly be out of the playoffs because there's too much money at stake for the Lakers and for LeBron James to not even make the official seven game playoff. So I would, I, I, you know, like whatever spare dollar I have, I would put on the line. You can grab this audio in the event that it actually happens and the Lakers end up losing two games. But I think the chances of that happening are virtually zero. Like there's no way that they're going to allow that to occur. While it would be terrible financially for the NBA, if the Lakers lost two games and didn't make the actual playoff tournament of the, of the NBA, would it would it lend yourself? Would it lend you to have more respect for the league and for the NBA? If They're going to bring with her, They will bring in Tim Donahue out of retirement in the fourth <laughs> quarter if the Lakers are in danger, and he will bring full on. Sa- sorry, Sacramento fans. It'll be Game Six of the uh, of the Kings against the Lakers inexplicable call after inexplicable call to do whatever it takes to ensure that the Lakers are able to uh, are able to advance I mean it the the fi- I, I feel in many ways like the NBA is a lot in common with the WWE 
where, you know, it's just like there's so many makeup calls. Every single, like the, the players are always, you know, discussing calls with the officials and the officiating always turns into a big story in a way that doesn't they can change really common occur. fouls. Yeah, and any <laughs> I mean, other, any other. We are the sport, review of a common foul. Yeah, there's nothing else that's even similar. It is very WWE like, um, I got to tell you, in general, when it comes to, uh, to making sense of it all. Uh, by the way, uh, College World Series is going to be beginning in earnest in a you know another couple of weeks, but college baseball pretty entertaining, right? I mean, especially in the SEC, if you're looking for a high level intensity sport right now. So you know Tennessee and Arkansas played over the weekend. Yeah. That was number four Tennessee in the country versus number one Arkansas. The, the biggest series of the weekend uh, for sure in college baseball. Um, I've never been a big college baseball fan. Now, you mentioned WWE, and I will say this. There is a an almost a UFC Dana White-type quality to college baseball because all these teams just talk trash to each other nonstop. Yeah. You've got Tony Vitello of Tennessee starting a, a fight after the game with his former boss at Arkansas, uh, the head coach there. Then he talks about it in the press conference like he's Dana White. Said, yeah, I said something that uh, that's about off the field stuff that I probably shouldn't have had at the moment, but I had to tell the coach what I thought about him. You know, after the game, <laughs> at yeah. the press conference. So there is elements of that that that's attractive uh, for a sports fan or a fan of just entertainment in general. But the fact that you have those two teams playing, and only one of those games is on television, not not streaming, but on television, I, I think is bad for the sport. I, I don't think it's going to be anything more than a niche sport as long as you have a situation like that 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 happens with those two teams playing in such a meaningful series. Chad Withrow, fantastic stuff as always. We will talk to you next week. Appreciate uh, all the time. Good luck with the team. Always enjoy it, Clay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. See you next week. Yeah. Good, good, good luck to you too. Hopefully uh, you win 35-3 to in the next week. I just, I just want to win a game. That's all we need. Team needs to get a dub. Uh, when we come back, we'll dive into the third hour of the show. Outkick writer Bobby Barak scheduled to join us. We'll also talk a little bit about the NHL and the NBA playoffs. Another wacky year. Not a bubble, but kind of close to it in terms of a different feel than what is normally the case. This is Outkick on Fox Sports Radio. 